Today we are going to explore the story of a writer. If I narrow the focus to the 19th century, how many great writers can I name? Stendhal and Victor Hugo of France, Charles Dickens of Great Britain, Rabindranath Tagore of India, Friedrich Schiller of Germany, Leo Tolstoy of Russia, Mark Twain and Emily Dickinson of the United States. But what about China? Considering his literary achievements and his influence on later generations, I think most Chinese would offer the same name, Lu Xun. The story today starts with an old courtyard style house. This is the summer of 1917. Lu Xun was 36 years old. He had lived in this dark room for about six years. This is a photo of Lu Xun and his colleagues at the Ministry of Education. He looks quite ordinary. For a long time in Beijing, Lu Xun worked as a nine to five civil servant in the Ministry of Education for the national government. He described himself as having seen the Xinhai Revolution, the second revolution, UN Shikai's proclamation to the throne and the Manchu restoration. The more I see, the more skeptical, disappointed and downhearted I get. Lu Xun wrote, but I have to expel my own loneliness because it's killing me. I tried many ways to numb my soul. I submerged myself into the public and tried to return to ancient times. Later, I experienced a few more tragic events, which I don't want to recall. I wish to bury them in the soil together with my brain. This is Jian Shentong, Lu Xun's schoolmate in Japan, an expert in paleography. Since August 1917, Qian Shentong paid frequent visits to Lu Xun. They had a famous conversation. Imagine many people who were sleeping in a windowless iron house that is extremely difficult to escape. And they will soon die painlessly in their sleep from suffocation. Do you think you are doing them a favor by waking them up to face the agony of dying helplessly. Since some people are up, you can't say there is not a minor chance to break out of the Iron House. This is Sai Yuanpei from the city of Shaoxing, just like Lu Xun. In 1916, he became director of the Imperial University of Peking. This is Chun Dushou. On September 1st, 1916, his article, Notes to the Young, was released in the revised New Youth magazine. This is Hu Shua. He returned to China from Columbia University in June 1917 and was the youngest professor at Peking University. This is Li Dajiao. At the end of 1917, he became curator of the Peking University Library. Tsai Yuanpei invited Chun Dushou, who founded the New Youth Magazine, to Peking University, which attracted many new intellectuals. The New Youth Magazine and Peking University's College of Liberal Arts quietly created what became China's new cultural movement. In May 1918, Liu Xun's short story, a Madman's Diary was released in New Youth magazine. Through the words of a madman, he angrily attacked what he called the old man-eating moral codes, which had prevailed for 2,000 years. 
I remember, though not very clearly, that in ancient times, people were often eaten. I looked in a history book with no records of what age it was. Phrases of virtue and morality are written carelessly everywhere on the pages. I cannot fall asleep at night, so I looked more carefully and saw one word everywhere between the lines. Eat people. The theme of a madman's diary is how traditional moral codes are destroying them. This was groundbreaking at the time. In such a unique way, Lu Xun joined the ranks of the May 4th Movement, an anti-imperialism, cultural, and political movement which emerged in 1919. He used the Fungzi 一个小说实际上才是代表了鲁迅在新文化运动中的地位more than 100 years ago, Lu Xun was born in Shaoxing, a town crisscrossed by canals and waterways in southeastern China. The year was 1881, 30 years before the demise of China's last feudal dynasty. I was born in 1881 into the Zhou family in Shaoxing City, Zhuajiang province. Lu Xun wrote this sentence at the very beginning of his autobiography. It was August 3rd, 1881, the seventh year of Emperor Guangxu's reign. The Zhou family was excited to have the first grandson of the family. The baby was named Zhou Yutai and affectionately called Ah Zheng. Lu Xun had mixed feelings for his hometown of Shaoxing. In many of his works, he showed love, reverence, and warm reminiscence to memories of the city, while in others, he conveyed hatred, rejection, and malice towards it. This is closely related to his initial experiences of hardship and the fickleness of human nature. Shaoxing was a mixture of both city culture and village culture. Since childhood, Lu Xun received a good education in both Confucian classics and customs of everyday life, both closely connected to traditional Chinese culture. In the last 50 years of Lu Xun's life, the landscapes, customs, traditional opera, and culture in his hometown were the only poetic memories he had in his life. These sweet memories often comforted his heart. In 1893, a disaster fell upon this large old family. Lu Xun's grandfather, Zhou Jiafu, was imprisoned for bribing an imperial examiner for a relative, despite his voluntary surrender to the court. That year, Lu Xun was 13 years old.
To avoid collective punishment, Lu Xun and his younger brother, Zhou Zoren, lived in the countryside, living in exile. Misfortunes never come alone. The next year after his grandfather was imprisoned, his father suddenly fell seriously ill. For Lu Xun, the peaceful life in his hometown ended forever. As the eldest son of the family, Lu Xun was under constant emotional stress. In his memory, this was an incurable trauma. Due to his father's illness, Lu Xun couldn't focus on learning ancient classics during what is called the Three Flavor Study, which is a key part of traditional education. Instead, he visited pawn shops and pharmacies almost every day, looking for rare Chinese medicinal herbs. He recalled later how he was scorned bitterly in the pawn shops and repeatedly teased and fooled by physicians. Later in his work, Father's Illness, he described his painful experience of visiting pawn shops and looking for medicine for his father. The illness and death of his father shrouded the entire family like a huge shadow. Following the loss of his father, the family's financial status declined sharply. From a child of a large family to a beggar living under others' roof, Lu Xun entered into society prematurely. After many years, he recalled, he could still feel the indignation of a young heart he lamented, I wonder if there is anyone else who has fallen from a well-off family into a dead corner. I think you will probably see the real world along the way. The two major domestic misfortunes young Lu Xun experienced caused serious damage to his mental health, leaving deep open emotional wounds for a lifetime. Living as a refugee and seeking medicine for so many years, Lu Xun had gained a sober understanding of social life and the true colors of human nature. Lu Xun, to Guxiang, ah, to Guxiang, the people is the most familiar with. And this Jiangnan, Shaoxing Guxiang, is also the most typical of Chinese, old Chinese. 那一个社会的缩影。早期记忆对鲁迅来说非常重要，而且他一生他这个一直没有摆脱早期的记忆。他去世之前写的有几篇文章都是跟故乡有关的，呃，看来就是是刻骨铭心的。这是，呃，对他创作也好，对他思想的形成都起了很大的作用。In 1898, Lu Xun was 17 years old. He arrived at a crossroads in his life after losing his father. In his hometown, he became a marginal man. Although the family was very poor and could barely make ends meet, he was asked by his mother to carry on with his studies and take the imperial examination. However, with the two incidents hanging over him, he hated and feared the right way of imperial examinations. But where to go? Lu Xun described his state of mind in an article. I am familiar with every face and even every soul in the S city. I have to find a different kind of people 
those despised by the people here, even if they are beasts or devils. The young Lu Xun was determined to leave home. In May 1898, Lu Xun boarded a small boat with a heavy heart and eight yuan he borrowed from his mother for traveling expenses. He later recalled, I walked on a different path to a different place to look for different people. This is a former site of the Jiangnan Naval Academy. During the nearly four years Lu Xun studied in Nanjing, China was in unprecedented turmoil. After losing the Sino-Japanese War, it went through the violence and madness of the reform movement in 1898. In 1899, the so-called Boxer Rebellion raged like a storm. In 1900, Beijing was invaded by the Eight Power Alliance forces, foreign troops who imposed their will on China. Throughout his teenage years and into early adulthood, Lu Xian experienced a China that was poor and weak, a nation at one of the lowest points in its history. Near continuous war brought the entire country to the verge of collapse. It was at this time that the 21-year-old Lu Xian went to study in Japan. This was a major turning point in his life. In 1902, Lu Xun graduated with the third highest scores from the Jiangnan Naval Academy. At this time, the government was sponsoring students to study in Japan. Lu Xun was chosen to be one of them. Having witnessed the rapid development of Japan after the Meiji Restoration, the government believed that learning from Japan was a shortcut to learning from the West. In 1896, the Qing government sent 13 students to study in Japan. By 1902, when Lu Xun arrived in Japan, there had already been a number of Chinese students there Studying in Japan became very popular. Lu Xun discovered a Japan whose national strength was growing, as was its ambition to dominate East Asia. Japan had beaten China's Beiyang Navy a few years earlier, and the whole nation was suffused with a disdain for the Chinese. Contempt from the Japanese and the indecent actions of his countrymen began to change Lu Xun's thoughts. He began to consider becoming an author instead of a physician. He wrote, My dream is very beautiful. After graduation, I will treat patients properly, not in the way physicians treated my father. During wartime, I can join a combat medical team while promoting people's faith through reforms. He changed his mind by chance after he saw these photos. The Russo-Japanese War broke out in 1905. Japan and Russia were fighting on Chinese territories to vie for spheres of influence in China. The Chinese government declared its neutrality. Lu Xun paid close attention to the progress of the war. During a break, Lu Xun saw a few slides about the war in which a group of Chinese were watching a fellow countryman being executed. He was deeply shocked. As he later recalled, this slideshow made him decide to become an author instead of a physician. Lu Xun began to learn German and Russian 
and translate the literature of weak European nationalities. This is a well-known quote from his work. Numb and weak citizens, however strong they are physically, are only meaningless display models and onlookers. Their diseases, or death, are not necessarily considered unfortunate. So our top priority is to change that spirit. Lu Xun in Japan was able to use the world 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 to use the 这个国家的那个身份，中国人的身份，就是像他早年的时候那种经验一样，带给他的屈辱感，带给他的挫挫败感，然后呢，就成为了一种深刻的体验。Lu Xun was high-spirited and vigorous in his pursuit of new ideas. Then he received a letter from his mother, urging him to return and get married. He replied. I think it is better for my proposed bride to marry another man. His mother telegraphed, Your mother is sick. Come back soon. A wedding was waiting for him at his hometown of Shaoxing. It was 1906. Lu Xun was 26. In the eyes of his relatives, he was an unruly young man who abandoned the right path of the imperial examination. He cut the braid typical of Chinese men, learned foreign languages, and wore foreign clothes. They worried he would sabotage the traditional etiquette of the occasion, but everything went on smoothly. Even his mother was surprised. The bride was from an ordinary family in Shaoxing. People called her Anne. She was three years older than Lu Xun. To this memory, I remember the wedding was held in Shanghai. Because the table was small, the wedding was big. The wedding was not yet over. The wedding was not yet over. This is a very bad symbol. When I went to the temple to pray, Lu Xun was also forced to pray. To pray. But later, when I saw the new bride, 但后来一看见这个新娘原来是这个样子，就非常难过。At the cheerful wedding, people had no idea that this was the beginning of a long and tragic marriage. Lu Xun was in despair. It affected his thoughts and his dreams of the future. His wife, Juan, suffered even more than Lu Xun. Lu Xun later said, This is a gift from my mother, and I have to maintain it. There is no love between us. By sacrificing my entire life, I owe nothing to 4,000 years of history. 4,000 years is a very long time, while men only get to live a short few decades. Lu Xun and Zhuan's wedding, ah, Huang Zhi himself said, "The hardest is not the enemy who brings the weapon, but the one who gives the poison to the friend." He gives the poison to the friend. 他又爱他的母亲，不愿意伤他母亲的心，但是对朱安呢，他又无法接受。所以后来他跟许叔章说：“这不是我的媳妇儿，是母亲送给我的一个礼物，我只好养着她。爱情是谈不上的。” The fourth day after the wedding, Lu Xun. His brother Joe Zoran and a few friends set out to Japan and didn't return for three years. After years of study in Japan, Lu Xun 
left Tokyo for China in 1909. This is a photo of Lu Shun, shortly after his return, dressed in a suit and tie, looking vigorous. However, in two years' time, after the Xinhai Revolution, he showed up at Shaoxing Normal School looking like this. He hadn't found one until he wrote A Madman's Diary, joined the New Youth magazine, and met a group of like-minded companions. Lu Xun finally arrived at a breakthrough point of his life. A black awning boat is moving slowly in the dusk. It is wet and cold in deep winter. A chilly wind sweeps across the sad and gloomy heart of a traveling man. A year later, in the novel The Hometown, Lu Xun revealed his feelings. The old house is drifting away from me, and so are the landscapes from home. Yet I don't feel many warm memories. I just feel there are invisible walls all around me, isolating and suffocating me. Hope is something both real and unreal, just like the path on the ground. There was no path, and it only takes shape as people walk on it. After leaving his hometown, Lu Xian traveled to Beijing and worked as a professor at seven universities. His published works won him tremendous recognition. He wrote fiction, prose poems, and essays, and he did so not just in classic Chinese, but in vernacular Chinese as well, making his work accessible to everyone. In 1919, Lu Xun bought a courtyard house in the old town area in Beijing. Lu Xun frequently had visitors at number 11, Ba Daowan Alley, mostly well-known scholars. The Zhou brothers were very hospitable. One day, Zhou Zoren invited Tsai Yuan Pei, who gave the brothers an offer to teach at Peking University. Since 1920, Lu Xun has been employed by seven colleges in Beijing to teach, including Peking University and Beijing Higher Normal College. His research on the history of Chinese novels was very popular in academia. In the literary world, his influence was well recognized. He was respected as a vital instructor in the Literature Research Institute, set up by Shen Yan Bing and Zheng Zhendo. He was also a mentor in the Qian Sao Literary Association, Chuen Guang Association, and the Sink Clock Community. Seen as a leader in the literary world, he also established with a few friends the Threads magazine, the Unnamed Society, and the Mong Yuan Society. Meanwhile, Lu Xun was passionate in art creation. With successive publication of his novels, like Madman's Diary, and the true story of Ah Kyu. He attracted great attention of readers in Beijing, Shanghai, and other places. A Madman's Diary was even included in elementary school textbooks. The Chinese society was turbulent in the first two decades of the 20th century. Lu Xun's novels in the 1920s cut open the grim reality of Chinese society like a scalpel. Yo 你发现都是前无古人的都是新的他没有被旧的文化所束缚 
，完全是，啊、呃，是一个，这个一个一个新的新诞生的这样的一种文化种类，啊，一种文学种类。Medium-length novel, *The True Story of Aq*, is his most famous work, and the most frequently commented on novel in the history of Chinese modern literature. It has been translated into many languages. The image of Aq was simmering in his mind for many years. Lu Xun said, "The reason why he engaged in literature was to wake up a sleeping public." 我要给阿圭立传，可是传的名目繁多，最后只好从旧小说的一句所谓“闲话休题，言归正传”里去除“正传”这两个字来，便叫做《阿 Q 正传》。干什么你？想打架怎么了？动手！君子动口不动手啊！老子今天就要动手！哎，一、二、三、好，我阿贵就是天下第一。儿子，大儿子，<笑>我们家先前比你阔多了。嗯，这个世界太不像话，儿子打老子。《阿贵正传》它是一种隐喻啊，呃，在这里边通过一个人物形象，它折射出。很丰富的我们民族生活的图景，我觉得这一点，呃，鲁迅为我们文学史，为不仅为中国文学史，也为世界文学史，贡献了一个奇特的一个典型的形象。In the summer of 1923, the atmosphere suddenly intensified in the courtyard house. A sudden incident occurred in the family. The two brothers turned against each other. It happened very fast. On July 14th, Lu Xun wrote in his diary, "From this day on, I will have my own meals in my own room." The family's change has been very important to Lu Xun, especially his and his two brothers' relationship. 矛盾啊！后来他们分道扬镳，这个对鲁迅刺激很大。他当时，呃，鲁迅就喝酒，喝了很多酒，就是感觉到，呃，非常的痛，很痛心。就是弟弟就这样和自己就，这种友情就没有了，兄弟之情就结束了。这个对鲁迅伤害很大。就作为长子来讲，他就像父亲一样，掌管着这个家，就有很高的责任感。因此，这种责任感呢，也。放大到到社会上，在社会上，他也是时刻的想着中国，想着中国的革命，啊，中国人的解放，这应该是他纠缠着鲁迅的一生的一个观念。兄弟失和是对他的一个极大的打击，也是他把他的文学作品推向极致成熟的这样一种，呃，推到成熟的一个。呃，一个标志，但是在这之后，鲁迅又呃和徐广平恋爱，又走出了这个极度失望和绝望的深渊，呃，又恢复了他原来的那个状态。这实际上是一又一场爱情，把他给拯救了。In 1925, 45-year-old Lu Xian fell in love. The object of his affection was one of his students. And she was nearly 20 years younger than him. At the start, they wrote letters to each other discussing life and society. It was from those letters that love grew. Their love story began through the exchange of letters. A month later, Xu Guangping visited Lu Xun for the first time. She called it an adventure. In her eyes, 
Lu Shun's study, which he named the tiger's tail, was full of fantastic colors. Sitting in that room with big glass windows, when the red lights are out, sometimes you hear the sound of rain and sometimes catch a few glimpses of the serene moonlight. When the Chinese juju bee bears fruit, just watch how its branches sway in a breeze and the ripe fruit drops. Sounds of chickens are heard all the year round. After this visit, it seemed their letters began to indicate romantic affection. They not only talked about society and life, but also teased and amused each other. After that day, Xu Guangping visited Lu Xun more frequently. This is a love letter. This is a book of love letters. Lu Xun was the first writer in Chinese history to publish his love letters, which involves some diminutive names and intimate conversations. But mostly dialogues about the past, present, and future of China between Lu Xun and his student. It seems the young woman's love gave Lu Xun the great strength he needed to pull himself together out of the dark abyss. This passionate prose poem, written by Xu Guangping, is more like a declaration of love. It might be an overreach. It might be an improper match. We might be of the same kind, or we might not. It might be legal, or it might not. These have nothing to do with us, and nothing to do with you. On October 3rd, 1927, Lu Xun and Xu Guangping arrived in Shanghai. After five days, they moved into number 23 of the Jing Unlie community in the Hongkou district. With the progress of the Southern Revolution, a movement to create a united country, China's cultural center gradually shifted from the ancient capital of Beijing to Shanghai with its strong international influences. Shanghai was like a big bustling stage. Here is the birthplace of radical revolutionary writers and a stronghold of old school literati. In the changing situations, Shanghai began to show its dazzling brilliance. Lu Xun spent the last decade of his life in this environment. In the lonely darkness, Lu Xun liked to talk with several young friends about society, life, and literature in the mornings and afternoons. He unconsciously acted like a father. In these photos, we see lively and cozy scenes of Lu Xun and his friends, like Rou Shua and Feng Shua Feng. These young men accompanied Lu Xun all the time, watching movies, swimming, or visiting art exhibitions. Yet their friendship was often overshadowed by the bloodiness of politics. In a few years, young leftist writer Ro Shua was shot dead in front of Lu Xun. He lamented in his poem, seeing young comrades killed by the enemy. The pain is like being cut by a dozen knives, and all I can do is write a little poem. He also witnessed the death of Director General Yong Chen of China's League of Civil Rights and deplored. My tears dropped in the rain south of the river for the valiant fighters. 
，肖红、肖军到上海的时候没有钱，他们跟鲁迅借钱，第一次见面，鲁迅就给他们一笔钱，让他们是能够能够有暂时在上海能够安安顿下来，就是这种责任感，这种父爱般的责任感啊，不仅在家庭里面，在他在左联时期对的青年。呃，艺术家和文学家都表现得淋漓尽致，很让人感动啊！就是他是，呃，很有爱意、很有暖意的一个人，有责任感的人。On September 26, 1929, Xu Guangping was in a hospital, about to give birth to her and Lu Xun's baby. Lu Xun gently put a small pine bonsai. Next to her bedside table, for a whole day and a night, Lu Xun hardly left her. Lu Xun was excited to become a father. The second day, Xu Guangping came home from the hospital and found another delicate pine bonsai in their house. More to her surprise, Lu Xun had rearranged the furniture. And cleaned up every corner, following the nurse's requirements. He usually paid little attention to such things. When the baby was born in Shanghai, Lu Xun named him Hai Ying, meaning "infant of Shanghai." He said the name was just temporary, and the child could change it after he grew up. The doctor suggested to hire a nurse. But Lu Xun insisted of taking care of the baby himself. Since the couple had no parenting experience, they carefully followed instruction books on parenting, for everything from breastfeeding to giving the baby a bath. Still, the baby often felt hungry or cold. They had to seek the doctor's advice and hire a nurse. In Joe Hai Ying's memory, a typical day in the house begins like this. Father often has to spend the whole afternoon with visiting guests. The conversations usually last a long time. I can hear the laughter, and sometimes I join them. I have no idea when the guests leave at night because I have already fallen asleep. Late at night, after Hai Ying fell asleep, Lu Xun wrote in the light of a lamp. Xu Guangping would read newspapers or do handicrafts by his side. The days with Xu Guangping in Shanghai was the best time of his life, other than his childhood. He once said to Xu Guangping, "I have to do something for China, to live up to you." Ten years after they met, in December of 1934, Lu Xun wrote a poem for Xu Guangping. For ten years, we have gone through difficulties and helped each other in danger. I hope this collection of paintings please your exhausted eyes, and we share sweetness and bitterness together. So, in the Chinese society, the most dark, the most unhappy time, Lu Xun's poems, you will feel that he. 虽然他揭示了那么多的黑暗，啊，写了形形色色的丑陋的人物，他和现象呃界里面那些，呃，魑魅魍魉的那种搏斗啊，所表现出的毅然决然的精神，并没有感觉到他阴冷，而且感觉到他身上是有一种热流在里边啊，所以这个就是一种担当感啊。鲁迅先生他不仅像刚才说的承担了家庭的义务。他也也也也肩负起了社会的呃这个责任。鲁迅作为一个呃现代知识分子，呃，体现了他的责任，体现了他的使命感，体现了他的呃情怀，是吧？这个呢，又是有呃非常值得宝贵、非常值得我们这个学习继承的东西。呃，他对于社会、对于民族、对于国家。对于文化、对于学术、对于文学，他都有极强的那种使命感跟那个责任感。鲁迅的一生就是反抗绝望、反抗奴性
，希望人从奴性的人成长为自觉的人，这是他最深的一个价值。鲁迅能够把他一个具体的一个家族的一个经验。和这个中华民族的民族国家的在现代世界里边所遭受的那种遭遇，把这个东西啊就可以合到一起来表达，呃，所以在鲁迅的创作里边，呃，个人的经验、家族的经验都不是仅仅属于个人和这个家庭的，它同时呢也是属于我们中华民族的，也是属于我们呃就是国家的一种经集体的经验。在这个民族，走向绝望、没有路可走的时候，他用自己的智慧和自己的生命的这种热能，他抵抗黑暗，啊，肉搏这个惨淡的暗夜，啊，他用生命自身的燃烧发出光热来，照亮了周围的世界，啊，使我们感到我们这个世界还没有完全的沦丧。所以他感召了很多青年人，啊，走上了这个思想解放和文化解放的道路。In 1936, Lu Xun was tired and aged. Although he was only 56 years old, his health was getting worse. After a serious illness in May 1928, Lu Xun had been suffering from tuberculosis and pleurisy. He often had fevers and coughed. Initially, the symptoms could be controlled by medication, but eventually, it began to fail. In autumn 1934, his fever lasted a month. He became even thinner, making his cheekbones appear even higher. His gums became distorted, and he couldn't wear his dentures. He had to send for a doctor to make corrections. For most of the time, Lu Xun sat on a couch in solemn silence. His eyes closed. Smokes of burning tobacco rolled up in his hand. Over the following decade, the last decade of his life, Lu Xian used his writing to embrace his social responsibility as an intellectual, leaving an enduring literary monument for later generations. He numbed, comforted, and encouraged himself with work. He fought against death with work. He showed gratitude to his concerned friends and answered his enemies with work. Act quickly is one of his life principles in old age. Early morning on October 18th, 1936, Lu Xun had a sudden asthma attack. After 56 years of hardship, he had finally reached the end of his life. 